What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the show. I'm Warlan, and today I'll be playing a completely different game. Generally, I've been playing more PC games. One of my favorite games to play, actually, is Clash of Clans. I've been playing Clash of Clans for a really long time now, maybe a few years, and this is the sum of it at 10 11. Slightly rushed, but, you know, rushing's more fun than not. So, uh, one of my favorite things to do in this phase was actually building bases. Building bases is really fun, requires lots of strategy, but I did come up with lots of different tips and tricks on building really, really cool bases. So, let's get started. Now, I'm going to split up this episode in a few different parts. First off, I'll be talking about the more basic aspects of the game and strategies that involve that and strategies that every single base needs. Then I'll talk specifically about every single town hall level from 1 to 13. Even though I'm in tunnel 11, still I know many different things about tunnel 13s. There aren't that many new things. Also, I will split up each part into based on making a war base and a normal base. The difference of this is in war base, those stars make a huge difference depending if you win the war, you lose the war, and millions of resources. While in a normal base, you want to protect your resources a lot more, like those gold collect, gold storages, elixir storages, and more. That's what you want to protect, and so that's why I'll be splitting up this episode. If you want to see all the times and skip ahead, feel free to do so. However, I encourage you to watch through the whole series, because there may be certain hints in Tunnel 1 or 2 that are really popular and necessary for every single Town Hall level after that. Let's get started. First thing, uh, I'm going to talk about some general, general building placements. What you want to do is you want to make the path for enemies to follow. This is the most important part of building bases. You want to pick which paths enemy troops follow, not your enemy. When they attack, they may use troops like wall breakers, like some giants funneling to try and push their troops the exact path you they want them to go. That's the challenge for you. You want to force troops to go the path you want them to, and not the path that you want the enemy to follow. So let's start uh, by making a simple base, and this base leads into the hint by not making symmetrical bases. When you build a fully symmetrical base, you do not know from one side the point of my attack, whether it be the top, the bottom, the left, or the right. And here, in this case, I have four bombs, all on all four sides. And I do not know from what side enemy might attack. The problem with this is if they do attack from any of the one sides, only one of those giant bombs will be activated, meaning the other three will remain idle. To fix this, I can make a maze slightly less symmetrical. Here, I won't even be changing that much. I'm just switching around a few of the Archer Tower placements, and now I know the opponents will attack from the Archer Tower sides. No one wants to go for the Town Hall, because the Town Hall has so much health, and if they attack from the Town Hall side, then the Archer Towers will slowly kill away all their troops, while their troops are hitting the Town Hall. By easily moving around a few of my Archer Towers and bombs, now that I forced the opponent to attack from the Archer Tower side, and if they do that, then two of the giant bombs will be activated at a minimum. If they choose to attack from just the whole right side, all four bombs will be activated before they manage to kill a Town Hall. Going with this, something that will improve your strategy is adding bait. A bait depends on what Town Hall level you are. It can be from something as simple as a mortar Tunnel 2 to having an Eagle Artillery on the outside. By placing my Eagle Artillery right here, I force the opponent to attack from that side. If they decide to attack from that Town Hall side here, then the Eagle Artillery will constantly be in attacking those troops, since the troops are in the Town Hall's or the Eagle Artillery's range. Instead, I force the troops to attack from the Eagle Artillery side, causing them to have to break the Eagle Artillery first. If I know this path thing, I don't want to easily give away my bait. For example, I can add a simple layer of walls here, that if they have melee troops like barbarians or giants, they'll walk around breaking those archer towers first, after which they'll break the eagle artillery. Now, also, your bait doesn't have to be easily accessible. I can maybe even add a few better defenses, like my level 14 cannon right here. Uh, and the pro of this is it makes my bait in close, or seem close, where the opponent decides to attack from that side, but it also makes that challenging to get, meaning 
I can improve the defense quite a lot, but the portal will still attack from this side. You do not have to make the bait easy to access. If you make the bait easy to access, that's a big problem. For example, I've seen many people who have their town hall as bait. Imagine I put my town hall out here to use as bait. Now, this is a lot more high value than town hall 12 and 13, where our town hall has a weapon. But here, even for me, some people will go straight for the town hall because it does give them a star and ensure their victory. The problem is if I put my town hall here, neither my cannon nor wizards will be able to hit the town hall, meaning a simple queen will be able to play there without any defense at all. And that's the same as putting a town hall out here. There's no difference to that. And that's not bait, because they might use a few archers to break that town hall and attack from this side, here with the wizard tower. And that's not what you want. You want an attack from the cannon side right here. That's why you want to put base like this eagle artillery right here on one side of the base, forcing the opponent to attack from that side. But don't give it easy to them. Maybe putting some other defenses here. Um, that way, they have to attack from that cannon side. There's so just so many buildings on the opposite lane. Now that's mainly the general part. Then I'm going to talk about each town hall individually. Tunnel 1 is kind of basic, all you have is barbarians, archers, and giants to attack, and really there isn't that much strategy. You have no walls at that time, and there isn't anything quite important. So I'm going to skip Tunnel 1 and head right to Tunnel 2. Tunnel 2 is when you unlock the mortar. Is it? Actually no, you do not get mortar, get mortar Tunnel 3. Tunnel 2 you have archer towers and cannons. Nothing really advanced, and but you do also get unlock. You also do unlock uh, goblins. Now for this base, people really often go for the town hall. Even though my town hall is town hall eleven, imagine that's a town hall two. It's a small little wooden shack. Here you also have very few walls, so you gotta place them wisely. People do try to attack the town hall, and here it's really easy to get a three star because there are very few defenses in the way. So I would recommend using the town hall as bait and having the other defenses around a pocket. Now you do not have enough walls to build a whole layer of pocket, and so I recommend something similar to this, where obviously you have level 1, level 2, ultra towers, cannons, walls, some hall, but here I'm forcing the opponent to attack from the town hall side, and then they will not be able to attack the cannon or the ultra tower until they break every single other part of the base. I could add, say, my... Uh, collectors on the sides, where they'll go for the town hall, then for the, each of the collectors, and then walk around to get into the cannon's pocket. There isn't that much strategy here, but that's one of the best things to do for this town hall, because you really want them to try and prevent a three star. Even if they break the town hall, you might lose one or two trophies, but it isn't anything major at these low town hall levels. And so, really, it's perfectly fine for you to have a town hall close to the outside, and, but still has better defense, as the three defensive buildings you have are better protected. Next, tunnel 3 is when you unlock the mortar. The mortar has a pretty, quite a big radius, but it does have an inner circle that it cannot hit, obviously, because the mortar will not shoot straight up and down. The thing about the mortar is it can be used in one of two ways. You may use as bait, or you can be halved on the core. The good thing about the mortar and other defenses that do, do multiple damage is they do increase damage to large groups. Imagine in an area there are 10 giants, and even though that ultra tower might do 100 damage, but it does 100 damage to one giant. If you have a wizard tower that has 40 damage, that is now 400 damage total, four times that of the ultra tower. It's the same thing with the mortar. It does very, very little damage at first. I'm pretty sure it's 3 or 4 damage, which seems like nothing. But because at that time, many people used troops like barbarians and archers in massive hordes. If those hordes are all together, then it can do up to 400 damage there are four, if there are 100 barbarians there. Or imagine something like that. For that reason, you do want to force troops all together. Now, imagine I have my town hall here, a few other defenses. Other than that, I do not want to have lots of holes, but I do not want to have no holes at all. Imagine I have a full layer of walls just like this, surrounding the whole base. 
That way, I do not know from what side barbarians and archers might go into, and so that way, they might break into this wall and the mortar will be unable to hit them. Instead, I could open a wall up right here that, that causes all troops to go around into that side. Now, to make it even harder, I might, say, put a little bomb there that would do some damage to those troops. And I may even have a defense on the outside. Like, I could have placed a cannon uh, right uh, here. Now, this is a hard defense. Because if they have barbarians and archers on the outsides, they may go in for those gold mines, those gold storages, uh, maybe their army camps around the outsides. But it's all going to end up leading back to this one little hole. And every single troop will go through that one hole. They're all grouped together, the mortar will be able to hit that area, doing high damage to those troops. Also, you do have two bombs at that level, or the uh, tunnel 3, so consider putting them close to mortar, meaning people will try to target the mortar, and so if they're all grouped together, like, and they all went through this one hole, then they all go for the break the town hall, go for these two pockets, or go for this pocket for the mortar, they'll all end up going on the bomb, which means they'll take heavy damage. Also, if you use the mortar as bait, just because it's bait doesn't mean you have to make it easy to break. I might put a few layers of walls around the outsides. That might not seem very, very important. Imagine I have my town hall here, a few cannons, and I just have my one mortar in this little layer right here. Now, this may seem like it's a weak defense because the mortar is out in the open, but I could add a few bombs and if I was attacking the space like this, I would simply spam all my archers or barbarians in this one spot, right here. The reason for that is because the mortars cannot hit that point, it's simply out of the mortars range. And so, I'll spam all the barbarians and archers there. I could even close one of these entry points, forcing all the troops to go through this one spot. And then all I have to do is put both my bombs here, meaning that those simple barbarians and archers those bad, big horde will all take heavy damage or even die. If it's giants, it will also take some damage. It will not kill them, but it is helpful. Something I do not want to do though, is I do not want to make that really easy to activate those traps. I could simply go one barbarian or one archer there that goes in, activates both bombs, and spam all my other troops. For that, I want to close off this compartment first, as well as add a tunnel which leads into my mortar compartment. This means that if, they're, if they do use a barbarian or archer, they have to go a group of at least 30 barbarians, because these two cannons will be shooting them, as well as this mortar, which can hit partially in the tunnel's range radius. So they'll have to go a big group of barbarians and archers to try to go in and break these two bombs. Here at Tunnel 3, you also do have the addition. Yeah, tunnel 3, you also unlock uh, goblins. The thing about goblins is they target resource, sto resource storages and collectors, like your gold mine, not laboratory, just gold mines, gold storages, elixir storages, and elixir mines. Um, meaning, if I want to attack with goblins, I might want to try to break away from all these gold storages on the outside and then go for the town hall. Because those goblins do increase damage to resource structures, they may be break that tunnel hall faster than barbarians and archers might. So for that purpose, I might want to have one gold mine or gold storage simply inside my defense, like right here. Or I need to open up a bit more. Here. This way, because they see that hole in, in walls, they're going to go th try and throw that hole. I do not want them to spawn inside this very gap, so I will close away that gap. This is the base. Obviously there are more buildings, this is just a strategy, I will not be showing you any actual bases, so you can make your own bases. Next comes Town Hall 4. Town Hall 4 brings the addition of... Uh, Town Hall 4 adds wall breakers. Wall breakers go to try to break walls, duh! But they usually are used with giants to try to break as many walls as possible, and I've seen bases that have one massive layer, one massive pocket, with every single building. Problem with this, like my, my top hall here, some cannons, and more. I just made this pocket really small. But the problem with a base like this 
is that if they go one wall breaker, they'll break three walls, or maybe two wall breakers, they'll break all these walls, and giants will go in quickly and easily breaking all three defenses. On the other hand, I want to try having one player or a one pocket with one or two defenses. Just I do something like this. Here I can have two defenses, like two cannons. I might then have another pocket that's really close by with also two cannons. That way, if they do use wall breakers, they'll only bust into one defense, defensive layer. Now, the more layers, the better. You could have a layer with simply one cannon. The good thing about this is it, is it makes it harder for the enemy to break into and destroy all your cannons. But it does use up quite a lot of walls. And so be sure you put your best defenders in those little spots. Something you also might want to think about is if, if they're attacking with those same giants and you already have the air defense, consider putting an air defense somewhere in the center that forces giants to go towards them and then have some walls with better defense like your cannons there. Cannons will attack and really harm all those giants, while the air defense will lure all the giants towards them. Now, I did make this pocket slightly too big. But imagine I have a pocket like these, like this. I have uh, two cannons in those two spots, and the giant, rather than go for the cannons, will actually go for the air defense first. I could even make it a bit harder and put it, some walls around this side, meaning that if all the giants will go, they'll go around here, around this path, go into that hole for the air defense. And that way the two cannons will survive last. Also, if they do have some troops like wall breakers, I might even want to add a separate layer of walls just around here that forces the wall breakers to try and attack them first. If the wall breakers attack those walls first, they will die to those walls and the actual walls will not be broken and the giants will still go for that air defense. And now, it's something you really also want to focus about is you do have the addition of spring traps. Spring traps are a really, really good defense because the high amount of troops they can kill. I recommend putting your spring traps close together, close to somewhere in the inside of the base, where you want all the giants to all be grouped together. Like if I have a base like this, I'm going to close off this compartment, make it easier to understand. If I have a layer like this, all the giants will go through this one little hallway right here. And I put my spring traps here. That way, when all the giants are together, they will all be blown away. With a really big amount of giants being blown away, you can instantly kill us those. A spell with higher levels, like a heal spell, will be able to do anything, won't be able to do anything. Because physically, the spring trap kills them instantly. Tunnel 5, uh, next is tunnel, yeah, tunnel 5. Tunnel 5 is the invention of the wizard. Wizards... They're good guys. They have little health, but they do high damage. For this reason, I do want to have... I do want to split away the giants and the wizards. Imagine I have a base like this. I have my tunnel hall, and I want to... on the top, and I want to split apart those giants and those wizards. And just, just to make it pretty and to make it understandable, I'm going to simply just draw a line right here that I want the troops to go split around. Now I want the giants to go one way, while I want the wizard towers, wizards to go the other way. For this reason, I might add a defense like a mortar on one side right here, while I have, for example, my collectors and storages all on this side. This forces the wizards, or this forces the giant, no, the giants, they like this mortar, they want to attack defensive structures, meaning if that's the closest defensive structure, they'll go for that mortar. While the wizards see all these collectors and pumps here, and they are going to go for those collectors first, with the, while ignoring the ignoring the mortars, meaning the giants will go one way, but the wizard towers, wizards go the other way. Then I can have something as simple as my archer tower here, chipping away all those archers, killing them. And because they have so little health, they will die pretty quickly. You also do a wizard tower now at this level. And now my wizard tower here, screwly killing all those giants. And because there are no wizards behind the giants, those giants will die fairly quickly. And they do very little damage. Also, tunnel 5, you already have some spells, and that's why I'm going to talk about splitting away our defenses. Now, you do not have four air defenses at the time, but imagine you did. Four air defenses. You don't want to put them all close together. I've seen people who put all four air defenses right next to each other. 
and that's a very bad idea for the reason that if someone has lightning spells, they might lightning in the very center and um, deal damage to every single target. And that's not good. That means that all four air vents will fall and they won't get much value. Instead of having all four air vents together, I'm going to split them apart, at least to have two spaces in between of each. This means that lightning will be unable to hit all four air defenses and break them all four. That's good, because you don't want all four defenses to fall. They do lightning, want them to lightning one air defense, and that's it. And that's called decreasing the spell value, meaning that spell isn't quite as useful. Something also with spells is many people will now have heal spells. With heal spells, they heal all the troops in a radius. The thing about that will decrease their value, is you want to split troops apart. Imagine you have the same giant, and in your base you might have a hole, now, I don't know why someone will attack both of this hole, but imagine you here you have a hole in your base that lets tr troops spawn, lets people spawn troops inside of there. I might have a cannon on one of these both sides. When you spawn giants and I have one hole, then half the giants will go for one cannon, while half will go for the other cannon. That way, if they have a heal spell, they'll only be able to heal half their uh, giants. Even if you split them up further, I might have two holes right here, which then leads into two my archer towers, one on every four sides. This means that when they do attack, one fourth of the giants will go for every single archer tower. And the good thing about that is that in the heal spell will only be able to heal one very, very small group. And that is exactly what you want. You don't want them to heal lots of troops. If they heal everything, then all the troops are back to full health. Just like a wizard tower, a heal spell heals uh, every troop there, meaning it will do increased heal in big groups. If there's a wizard tower there and it attacks four buildings or four troops, like four giants, it will do four times the damage total because it does damage to every single troop in one of those four. But if all four giants are together, it's when you use a heal spell, that heal has four times the effect. Because of this, you may actually, rather than using wizard towers, consider putting some other towers there. They might do more or less damage in total, but they do more damage to one troop, meaning that troop might by itself even die, even in a heal spell, just because of its high damage that is being taken. Next, I'm going to go into Tunnel 6. Tunnel 6 is an invention of the healer. You already have the balloon, and you already have the healer. And so there are a few things you want to do. The healers are almost like a heal spell, but they are troops, and they'll actually follow. And the main time they're used is with the giants. For this reason, you're going to put your air defense closer to the outside. If someone attacks with balloons, and the air defense will be able to defend itself. But if they attack with the giants, then the giants, then the healers will be killed by those air defenses. Because if there's a giant at one spot, just to show you to place the wall, if there's a giant right here, then the healer will have to be still here. And if you notice, that healer is in the radius of the air defense. Meaning, while the giants are attacking the air defense, the healers will be attacking them. Or the, the air defense will be attacking the healers while the giants attack the air defenses. Um, now, this is good because that means you, you kill those healers right away. But instead, you put the air defense in the center, they might end up breaking every single defense around before they actually break into that air defense compartment, meaning the healers will remain alive and help the giants clear out the whole base. You don't want that. You want the healers to die as quickly as possible. Also, by that time, you do have an air sleeper. Your air sleeper is an awesome defense. It's insane. I only have a level 4 air sleeper. What it basically does is it makes this whole area push back. The good thing is, if you position them right, they could change the whole outcome of battle. Say I put my air defenses right here, two air defenses, then that air sweeper will push away any troops going for these air defenses. Imagine they're balloons. They're going to push away all these balloons that are targeting the air defenses. That way, imagine they're placing balloons in this spot right here, try to go for the air defenses. But I might add a cannon here, and a cannon here here, on the opposite side. That way, when they attack with when they attack with balloons, they might cast them and try to go for the air defenses, 
So they push back to target the cannons first. With this, with balloons, you want to make sure that there's a path for the balloons to follow as well. Meaning, if you have an air defense right here, add some mortars around combined to group together. Means, which means the balloons will go for these four mortars before they actually go for the air defense. Also, when attacking balloons, I've seen people go with lightning spells or with healer spells. Heal spells are good if they see any air mines. These air mines do damage, which approximately puts a balloon down to half health, which means that the air defenses or archer towers will do high damage. To make those heal spells useless, just put two air, air bombs together. Now you do not want to put your air bombs close to the town hall. If you put, if you have a town hall, then you might put some air bombs. Let me reach them air bombs. And then you have your air defenses. The problem with this, though, is that the, bomb, the balloons will not go for the air bombs because they don't want to attack the town hall. They're going to go for those two air defenses. And if they're placed in a point like here, they're just going to go for that air defense first and then for that air defense. Those air mines will never be activated. <coughs> Sorry. Instead, you may want to put those air mines outside here where they'll be activated as soon as they place the balloons. You don't want to let them play balloons right away here. So what I do is I play one balloon first to check for air mines, after which I would go on my other balloons to make sure there aren't. What I also could do is people try splitting up their balloons sometimes to make sure that balloons don't all die to air bomb. They all go for multiple air defenses, they go for the wizard towers, they go for the archer towers. I'm going to put two defenses together, this wizard tower and this air defense. And the opponent might use a big amount of balloons compared to if they were apart. If they're apart, they might go six balloons for the air defense, four for the wizard tower. But if together, they're together, they'll go ten balloons all together. The good thing of this is that bombs will do kill ten balloons. If it, however, if they're to get apart, then it will only kill these six. That's a really high advantage for you. And all seven is one of your major changes. Because you get, where is he? This guy. The Barbarian King. The Barbarian King is your very first hero. And as a hero, he does high damage. And along with the Barbarian King, you do get some of the best troops in the games. Like dragons and hogs. Which are going to be used until the very end. I mean, you do get some more defenses, but they're not that significant. The most significant things are preparing king. If people attack with air defenses, or if people attack with dragons, uh, duh, um, they're gonna go for your air defenses. So try putting your air defenses closer to the outside. Or, if you have them, don't put them all together and group together. Try splitting them up. One here, one here, one here. This means that if they attack with dragons, the one will go for each of these two or three air defenses. And if people can split up those, split apart those dragons, some going for each, or they can simply go all on one air defense. If they split them up, then all the air, all the air dragons will take heavy damage before taking out those air defenses, or they might even die. If they all go for one air defense, then the other two will be so far apart that it's an advantage for you. If they're all together, then if they break one, they're likely to break the other two. Now your king, you want to put your king in the center, in the center, in your core. The reason for this is that stops hogs. Hogs are really, really good at that time because you can have a big amount of them, like 20 hogs, and all together with healer spells, they can quickly and easily shred through the base and all the defenses. Now, the one thing they cannot attack is the king, and the king will do lots and lots of damage to the hogs. So consider putting your king right there. I actually have a Tunnel Elite account that I pay, which is my mini, and on my mini, I attack with hogs. But I see people who have king, and I need to get rid of the king. So what I use is I use four giants, ten wizards, my king, and some hogs. That way, people put their kings on the outsides, my hog rider, my giants, and my wizards, well, my king will take out the king, as well as maybe some other defenses, like the bomb tower they recently unlocked. Then my hogs will easily break away all the other defenses. But if you have a very king on the very, very center of base, then it'll be really hard to kill the king if you just had to go into the very core and kill the king right away. Also, people don't know 
the clan castle, because there's because the tunnel, tunnel is quite low, clan castle is really, 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 really good. I think at this level you were already able to hold a dragon, like a dragon and a balloon, and that dragon could easily change the outcome of a game. If you have your clan castle, maybe your town hall, but as well as your king in the center, maybe a bomb tower as well, because it's one of your good defenses at the time, then um, for people to reach the center, it will take a while. And if you have lots and lots of space between your defenses and the outside, you will be unable to activate that clan castle. Here, the clan castle has a radius, at which it's activated. But I have defenses around this whole circular radius. Then people will be unable to activate the clan castle unless they go on the inside. Now, that can be one of two things. If your clan castle is on the outside, like here, I'll activate it easily and kill it easily with my giants, my hogs, or not my hogs, with my giants and wizards. But if it's on the inside, I'll have trouble. So that's what I might do: is I might use a single um, hog rider, try to get it in here. Imagine I have a yard. Imagine I have a cannon right here. I'm not trying to get that hog into it to attack the cannon and activate the clan castle troops. But it doesn't always work. If the cannon is so far out, that hog will attack the cannon, die, and the clan castle will not be activated. That is insane for you, because that means when I spam all my hogs, the dragon will then activate, and it will wreck those hogs. Especially if you're in a good clan, then those hogs will be not a threat of you, and no threat to your baits. You also want to consider that those hogs jump over walls, so you cannot route a base using walls. You cannot push all those uh, hogs using walls. What I could instead use is the way my all my defenses are organized. I might have here three cannons all grouped together. That the hogs will attack first before this bomb tower because the bomb tower is just so far away. And this, this means that the bomb tower will consistently do damage to all the hogs attacking these cannons, while the hogs will be will not kill that bomb tower until the end. If I have a bomb tower is right here, they'll kill it pretty quickly along with these other cannons, and you don't know which order they'll attack it to. But you want them to attack in the order you want them to. So Tunnel 8, bring, tunnel eight brings about Pekkas, Golems, and which and Valkyries. All are heavy damage troops with uh, lots of health. The Valkyries have less, but there's a higher amount of them, which is really, really good for them. Now, Valkyries will prefer to target troop defenses that have that are close together, because in this case they can kill both cannons. However, if there was a can if these cannons are split apart, they'll go for any of these three. You don't know which order because they cannot hit both at the same time. Cans are together, go with that cannon first, if they can kill both at the same time. Pekas and Golems, again, they also are heavy hitters, and so you want them to funnel, you want to make sure it's hard for them to funnel, and and uh, they try to go and get a whole base before they attack the other side. For this reason, I'm actually going to bring about my mini, and I'm going to show you the base that I have on him. So to show you better, this is my tunnel 8, it's almost max, just a few more defenses left. But here, I have a very very good defense against cannons, or against P.E.K.K.A.S. Here I have a very good defense against golems, against... Golem, yeah, golems, P.E.K.K.A.S., Valkyries. As you can see, here, you have two choices, attack from the top, where I have my good defense, or from the bottom. The bottom has the resources, but still, most people attack from the top because that's my, where my town hall is. And I also have my king here. Now my king is slightly close to the outside, which isn't that good, but I do have lots of other defenses here, and no one attacks me with hogs. You see my attack log, it's Pekka's, Pekka's, Valkyries, Pekka's, Pekka's, Valkyries. So my king is more on the outside, that's okay, I'm okay with that. But here I want my Pekka's to go, or enemy Pekka's to go around all these outside buildings, as well as they can go through this little layer inside of here. What I want is them to ignore these top few defenses. If I see in the last few replays, like with this, uh, like, um, here, when they attack with six Pekkas, as you can see, they attack from either the top or the bottom, 
It's going to be stuck on the bottom. And that dragon that I have right here, that does heavy damage. And he almost failed to kill just a few wizards left. From the bottom, he managed to get out this outside. But then he breaks into this bat long compartment right here. And he breaks through that part. And these tough few defenses just remain alive the whole time. Also, Tunnel 8, I'm pretty sure Tunnel 8 or Tunnel 7, you get this little guy, this tungsten trap, skeleton trap. Skeleton trap is really, really good because there's simply, for me, it's six troops instead of two skeleton traps that Pegas will just constantly hit. It just strikes the Pegas. That's six hits, and those Pegas do a lot of damage. I'm, I'm, I have a, I didn't see my army, my Pegas here do 270 damage per second, which is 270 damage times six the hits. That's over a thousand three hundred health. Three a thousand three hundred damage. It's really good. Now jumping back to my main account. Now, jumping back to my main account, um, Tunnel 9 also brings quite a lot of new things. Most, <coughs> sorry, most importantly is the Queen. The Queen is a defense that is in insane damage. Not as much as the Inferno Tower, a single Inferno Tower, but it still does really, really high damage. And you really want to upgrade them, upgrade her. Also, you do get the Expos. And Expos, I'm going to talk about them specifically right now. The Expos have two modes. They can either be ground mode or air and ground mode. Air and ground mode hits a smaller radius. It does hit both ground and air mode. What we want to do is we want to look at replays to see what types of attacks people are attacking with and change your Expo depending on what attack. Also, Tunnel 9 is the invention of the Queen Walk using the Queen. And so for that, there are a few ways to stop the Queen Walk. One thing is making, a, like, placing some walls that the Queen Walk cannot shoot through. Here you can see that right here, if the Queen is in this point right here, the Queen will be unable to hit that cannon. If I want to make the cannon fully invincible from the Queen, I'm going to add quite a lot of, quite a big space right here. But in this space, the Queen will be unable to hit that cannon because the queen's radius is just not big enough to hit the cannon. Now obviously, you're going to be forced to put a few walls here, or some other buildings here, that will prevent troops from spawning into that cannon's range. I don't know why you'd want to protect the cannon that way, but I'm saying expos is quite a good idea, just because the amount of damage the expos do. Expos really do insane amounts of damage, especially when you upgrade them. Like this is a level 5 expo. I don't think it's max for me, actually. But it still does. Insane damage, and so I want to protect it well. And what I want to do here is again, now in these pockets, there are a few things you could change. You could, rather than having walls here, you could put some other buildings or defenses, like you could put my wizard towers here. The thing about I like about that is imagine they're attacking with Pekas. Those Pekas will go along among, and then I have my team defenses here. The Pekas will go among the two air defenses. And then try to break in here. If instead, rather than having the wizard towers here, I have walls, rather than breaking into this compartment, I actually go for that air defense. And so, just to, sh just to show you, my main base, I have right here an anti queen walk inferno tower pocket, as well, uh, at least from the top, as well as not anti queen walk, but still have two spaces against troops like bowlers and wizards. And I have people who attack me, and people who attack 99%. Because I can only find one who got 99%. But I have people, especially in war, who attack me and just did not break this one inferno tower because it's in the compartment on its own. The queens on the top just cannot reach that one inferno tower. Um, wait one second. Right. So back here, if you don't have inferno towers, tunnel 9. Also, to counter the Queen Walk, what you also want to do is you want to make sure that the place the Queen Walk is spawned at 
heavy damage. Let's say I have my Cephalos bait out here, and I want an opponent might attack from that tunnel side. I put my, my double cannon here, I put my double auto tower here, or fast auto tower, burst cannon here, and I may put my expos right here. What this means is that it's gonna be really hard for that uh, auto tower queen to kill or destroy the tunnel hall, just because of the heavy damage that it's taking. In this case, if I have expos here, I may want to put these two on air and ground mode because they're so close and they can hit say this point right here as you can see they can hit them but these ground ones could also hit that point even though they're farther away these ultra tower and cannon can hit it slightly barely maybe but i may want to move them position them closer up here that's what you want to do and you if you defer to lower town hall level you always want to put your defense with a smaller radius closer to entrance points compared to the outer radius. Now I've seen bases, we've seen many bases that have a ton of hall in the center with a compartment of its own. And then they have four square compartments just on all four sides. Now, I won't build the whole compartment, but imagine defense like this. Here I've seen people put their wizard towers in the center and then their archer towers on the outsides. Now, this this archer tower can hit what a lot of radius up to right here. But the wizard can even hit past this wall. That's not very good. Especially when you get a higher level and your bases take up most of the whole map. If there's to this very corner, the archer tower loses a big chunk of her radius just simply because there is no place to place troops. This wizard tower cannot hit that mix part. You switch the two, the wizard tower cannot hit that side, and so can the archer tower. Archer Tower doesn't lose any part of its radius, and it defends the Wizard Tower, while the Wizard Tower defends it. That's a really, really good idea, that's a lot better than, than having it this way. Think about that. Now, when you reach Tunnel 9, I'm going to go a lot more in focus about having war bases or non-war bases. The difference is, in war bases, you want to have your tunnel across the center, Oh, or in war base you would have your tunnel on the outside. The difference is based on it's called it's called an anti two star base or anti three star base. Anti three star base makes it difficult for an opponent to break the whole base and get all three stars. It's coming in the tunnels on the outside, but defenses like your eagle artillery, even though tunnel line doesn't have that yet, are in the center. Also something about having anti three star bases is if you want to put me as simple as a uh, Builder hut. Where is that? Oh, my builder, builder. Like well, builder huts in the four corners. You may have seen this. You may be annoyed with it, but it is powerful and it does really work. Because if they break the whole whole base in the center, then like the whole base, just the warden. Let's imagine this whole base there. There'd be four huts they have started to break. Now, even better, placement. Placement. You could break one of these uh, farm huts and put a test line here. Now, people don't know about those Teslas. If I'm attacking a base, I may see this huts in the, and plan to add a few archers, like one or two archers there, that will break those huts, so that I don't have to worry about not three starring. I don't expect that Tesla, I don't see it. And so that is a massive surprise element, which will hurt me really badly. Which will hurt, not me, which will hurt the enemy really badly, because it might cause them to turn fail. With anti two star bases, you want to put a tunnel, tunnel in the center. What you could even do is have a one or like whole layer of walls around the town hall. Maybe two layers, maybe three layers. I don't know how many layers you want of walls. But um, this makes it make it as hard as possible to break the town hall. Something about this is that we have a different level of walls. To think about where we're gonna place them. As you can see, I have 109 level 7, 185 level 8, 5 level 11, and 1 level 12. Now Right now, I'm upgrading my level 7 to level 8 walls, which is kind of low, that's tunnel 8 low. But, I do not want to put my tunnel 8 walls around the center of buildings. Instead, I want to put my tunnel 7 walls. The reason for this is because people generally try to funnel the base before they actually even do their main attack. In the level 8 walls here, there's a high chance that people already used the majority of their troops. And they'll break through those walls easy peasy. But instead, if you put level six, level seven walls here, or the level lower level walls here, then 
it won't make any difference to them. But if you have final walls here, make sure to funnel in. If you use some wall breakers to funnel and break those walls, make it from two wall breakers to three wall breakers, something like that. And that is a really important difference because if they don't break that wall, the whole whole attack could change. Also, if you have pockets like these and you don't know where to put your hollow walls, put them in intersections. This one wall right here connects compartments between this one cannon and this town hall. Rather than putting a level 7 wall, put a level 8 wall there. And for that reason, uh, then if they attack, then the troops like giants, troops like wall breakers, will want to break that hollow wall first. It allows entry to two compartments. So put your better level walls there to make sure they're taking a lot more. We could even have level 1 walls here and max level walls there, just because you might know that people are going to attack those, attack those high level walls only. Also, I feel like it doesn't make much difference upgrading walls. In my attack, I either attack with E-Drags or I have a wall wrecker. In my mini, I have hog riders, and there's so many troops that just skip the walls. All air troops, hog riders, miners, they might have a few wall bricks in attack, might have earthquakes, might have jump spells. So I feel like walls really don't make much of a difference. Because either way, they'll get past those walls. So I feel like it's okay to have lower level walls. I do have one level 12 walls, seven level, seven level 11 walls. And the reason I'll show you this in my main base is the placement for them. Now in my main base, I have my base, which is my equal artillery, level 2. And I have my rest walls right, right here. That is because I see many attacks, people coming with wall wreckers. These wall wreckers, they play here, breaking away this part to get into that eagle artillery and destroy it. That way, it prevents, which is the two hits, two, or some one hit on these walls, the two hit, maybe even three hits, which is the difference. It, an extra five six, five, six seconds. And because I have really good defenders here, my level 14, or soon to be Utter Tower, my level 14 cannon, my queen, warden, king, bomb towers. I want to do as much damage as possible while it's breaking these walls. Now, they don't attack exactly from straight on. They might attack from this one side, breaking this gold mine. That way, I have these level, um, I have these level 11 walls here, which, come on, warden, move out the way. Level 11 walls here, which will take the hit if they're not exactly on the point I want them to. Ten level 10. You got the addition of Inferno Towers. Inferno Towers are insane. Inferno Towers can be multiple or single. Multiple if they have five targets and do some damage depending on what level they are. And then in a single, they do one, they have one target, slightly, slightly smaller range. But the damage they do is insane. They wreck troops like Golems, like Pekas. That's why if you have a good high position point, like you may have. Uh, a few expos around there. Put your inferno tower there, because that way they cannot go queen walk from that side, simply because that inferno tower will wreck it. In this case, actually, uh, rather than having my inferno tower there, I will. I want to switch that inferno tower to multiple mode. The reason for this is multiple is good against attacks like yetis, miners, valkyries, hog riders, and that's really really good high game. But if they attack with a queen walk, queen walk generally go target for the for these inferno towers. Then these three expos will harm that queen. Also against the queen walk, which is, I forgot to tell about this, is at a seeking air mine. Queen walk, they're healers. Healers are what derive and allow that queen walk to exist because they heal the queen. The people attack with either four healers or five healers, as well as some rage spells. If you can kill a healer, then the whole walk fails. Now, I see people who bring in a balloon, maybe two balloons, to try to, to, try to force those seeking or to target the balloon rather than healers. For this reason, imagine they're attacking from the top. I have my uh, town hall here. And then, if they're, not, if they're attacking from the top, they might go in a balloon. I might put, rather than having, than having them having demons everywhere, I might have some defenses around this way. That way, the balloon goes for these three. The healers go for the queen, which might even go to the right. So I might put my seeking airman here. If they put their balloon in the very corner where the queen walk, 
don't go for these cannons, while the healers might die with seeking air mine, which is good, very good. Also, with Inferno, uh, Inferno Tower, uh, you may want to put Inferno Tower in an anti queen or anti uh, anti most troops, like most ranged troops walls. And that's good because that way your Inferno Towers are the defenses you want to protect. You also have a choice of putting them either on this together, like all together, or apart. Together, they protect each other. If one is multiple, one is single, then uh, the single one will kill things like Pekas, like Queen Walk, which the single multiple cannot. But the multiple will wreck bad spells, will wreck hogs, spells, and so on. That's the multiple, normal for me. Me, I'll go back to my base. For me, I actually have single infernos, just because when I see people attack, they attack with Pekas, they attack with golems, miners. And even though it may seem like a multi is better against miners, actually like singles, because a single will kill a miner one at a time. But because people have heal spells and just a wide, wide uh, range of different other spells like healers, maybe you know, some healers from the Queen Walk, the Inferno multi inferno will not do that much damage, while the single inferno will slowly chip away those miners. Also, I do have my skeleton traps there, which spawns four skeletons. Which does mean that if I have the attack with Pekas, they'll go for the Inferno Towers first. Something that's important in a base like this is people have two types of attacks. They could try either to have a kill squad go to the center, break the good defenses, and split out from that. Or they may try to go from the sides, cut them off, and have a line just so they go through, straight through and they pass through. In this case, they might use some E-Drag, just to show you, from this top side, to clear away all the top defenses. E-Drag's on the, e the bottom, to clear the bottom defenses. And from this side, they can have a whole big attack, which goes all the way through. Or, they can use a death kill squad, like Bowler's Golem, um, maybe even a Queen Walk, going from this one side, which goes into here. Kill squads generally try and target the best defenses. Then people put all their good defenses in the center. Like right away, I'm just gonna show you a different player. I was I don't know who this guy is. I'm just gonna visit him. It's a tunnel 13, didn't mean to do that. But here he has his town hall, his eagle, his inferno tower, his uh, expo, uh, queen, all together in this one little layer. That means if someone attacks from this side, say, or I would attack from this side, I can break this one inferno with my wall wrecker, and my kill spot and go into this little pole, this compartment, break all the good defenses. On my base, however, Instead of that, I even if they make a skill squad, one thing they break is the eagle artillery. I have my best defense, which is the inferno towers, my and expos still on the outsides, which are full health and which will constantly deal damage. Now, you may cringe at these defenses on the outsides. You may think cannons or our towers on the outside isn't that a waste? They're on the outside, not protected by walls. Actually, it's kind of the opposite. So when they're from this side and they manage to break away the town hall, break a dark sword, and end up being here, at least all these defenses will start shooting. And to get here, they actually have to break these walls. Meaning, there actually are no layer of walls, technically. And I do have people who attack from this side. That's why I have this one high level wall for a wall wrecker. But, if they attack from this side, then the eagle artillery will do enormous damage, because it can constantly hit. Now, Tunnel 11 is when you do unlock the Eagle Artillery, so I'll talk about that. Eagle Artillery... The Eagle Artillery um, actually cannot hit the whole screen. If I put it in this one corner, there are a few things you might notice. First off, it has to have a real buffer zone around it that cannot hit. And if you're using it as a bait, don't put it in that one corner, because then people might quickly break that, but the Eagle Artillery cannot hit it. At least put it somewhere here. Where if they place troops, say here, then the eagle team might have at least one hit on those troops. Also, if I zoom out, then you might notice that the eagle artillery actually doesn't hit the whole screen. There's this whole spot right here that cannot hit. I don't think this is super useful, because how many times do you generally put your eagle artillery on that corner? Also, you need to move it just a bit. Still in the corner, it hit the whole screen now. Or just you may want to think about it. Just 
even though it's not that important, just think about it, pay attention to it. It could change the whole game. Also, you do get, in my opinion, your best trap, the Tornado Trap. Tornado Trap takes all the troops around in its radius and tornadoes, tornadoes them together for approximately 6 seconds. That is insane, because that means that there's any bomb towers, whiz towers, you can artillery, they'll hit every single troop there. Which is awesome. Uh, also, at panel 11, you get your Warden. Your Warden can jump over walls, and he is good at following troops. Now, something funny is many, many attacks, as you've seen. I have, if you looked at my base right here, I'll go back to my base. Uh, I have my Warden right here, that's not important. They attack with troops like Hogs or Miners that will support their, uh, uh, support they were, their uh, Grand Warden. Then, they attack from this side, and they might attack with the warden in air mode. Then, right away, taking air mine, air warden's ability gets activated, which means it makes it useless. People, when they attack, they try to get their kind of warden with their troops in the center, use their ability there, making the troops invulnerable to, so say, mine expos, mines, you know, inferno towers. But here, when they attack, they either attack from the seeking air mines, or if it's in ground mode, then, then, Troops like Pekka's just will not attack my Inferno Towers, Expos, and so ability in it itself won't do too much. I don't, no, I don't have Tunnel 12, so I'm just going to talk a bit more right now. Now, what you should do is watch your replays. Right here, I'm going to go see what, how they attack me. Now, this guy, as you can see, let's see, he's attacking with the left side, clearing away and funneling, as you can see. I do need to prevent a funnel on that side. Then the queen walk with the blimp to get on the inside. And the blimp has the E dragon, but I also have high E dragon and an almost closed queen. And BC just goes in, funnels this side. For that reason, I might try to have a better defense on this side. But the only reason that actually works is because my cans are so low level. I just need to upgrade them. I have all five that are doing something right now. And if I just have higher levels, the strategy will not work. Also, something I've seen, and I do not ever do this, but I've seen people who just copy attacks like this. Now, when I was solid 10, when I was solid 10, I would attack with miners and queen lock. And I saw a base, I saw a person who had a base exactly like this one. And I'm just like, okay, well I know how to do this. I got, I got a queen here, my healers, whiz, wizards, and then, and then I want all the queen funnels fully, I go one wall breaker, I know there's a trap there, or here, but whatever. Um, I go rage, obviously then my mine, well that didn't work obviously this time, but then I go all my miners on this side, and I 3 start him, and that's how I 3 start him as well. That's what you don't want to copy bases. I kind of feel that attack, but I actually 3 start the players then. You don't want to copy bases, because then that way you know how to attack someone. When you see higher level people, then you might have it's a high chance you attack at least one of them already, one of their bases, and so you already know exactly how to attack them. Also right here, let's talk about my clan castle placement. The way I place it is that they have to either be close to equal artillery or break into the dark storage place, which means that they have to break a whole lot of the base for my clan castle is activated. Imagine I put it out here, that would actually activate and kill it. That's not what I did, I put it in the center, meaning if they do go for the eagle artillery, it'll quickly be killed. Um, Final 12 adds yetis, but on my rush account, which is this one, Final 12 and we get a builder base. As you can see, it's very rushed, I have level 6 archer towers, but all that adds is it adds yetis, I didn't upgrade them yet, as well as it adds the ability to train your own siege machines. Siege machines. Now, the reason I have this is to donate siege machines, but people still attack a lot more often with siege machines. So I have my gold buttons up here. Also, it's not 12. Your town hall is now a weapon. Cost lots of everything. It's level 1 for me. It's a Giga Tesla. Has um, two targets for me. I'm pretty sure it has up to five, four or five targets. It does high damage and explodes when destroyed. Destroyed, and so that this is now a really popular defense. We try to attack, and so you want to make sure that it's hard to attack that. 
also, as you can see right, right now, my army camps, I have electric dragons, which are good for me, because they're really, really strong. Cheap, not kind of cheap. Uh, but what I don't want to do is I do not want to have layers that each dragon is going to hit through. Right here, you can see that I have two layer gap between this expos, meaning each dragon cannot hit them. Also, to my air defenses, even though they're low level, I still have a two block gap, meaning it's hard to hit it as well. Also, if you do get a third Inferno Tower, I recommend having a, at least one, or maybe two, um, with multi, and then one single. Single is better against our Queen Walks. Now, in this case, I do have two multi Infernos, because as you can see, people would have with 70 goblins going for the loot. Not everyone, but lots of people are telling me that. Because so Infernos, they're going against goblins. Single art don't do that much, and so I want to protect my resources. And so that's why I have my multi infernos. Going back, I'm actually gonna go and look at the face that I expected it before, but it's an all 13. I don't know how it's an all 13, but really you get a few new things. First off, we go back here. Uh, it's all 13s, they get scatter shots. Scatter shots, they do high damage. They're good if, if there's a tr like a good squad, meaning there's say golems and wizards. They do damage to the wizards as well, so that's good. Also, to level 13, you will now have their town hall as a new weapon, rather than being a test that's in the Pharaoh Tower, as well as here you get. Let me see if he has it. This here, the Royal Champion. Royal Champion is almost like a hog rider, going for defenses. I think it goes for heroes, not 100% sure, but I think it does. And it's good, but you to counter it simply, because people are usually with hog riders, put a few giant bombs there, that kills it, just as the kills hogs. Um, now, now you also remember, you still want to make sure, well, my camera disappeared for some reason, but you also want to make sure that troops go the way you want them to. And that's important, very, very important. Because when it's face, who knows where he'll attack from. Like, personally, I would attack from either this side, going for the Inferno Tower and the Eagle Artillery, or from this side, because the scatter shot's out in the open. If the is not out in the open, I can go into this main compartment right away. See, you don't know that. I'm guessing you might have copied this base, so I don't know if I could be someone else's base, and so I'm not sure if it's a good base or not, but people already know how to attack them from this base. Um, then... Um, one more thing I want to talk about is... Uh, one thing I want to talk about is your Teslas. Your Teslas are popular, really good defenses. Imagine I have four, imagine I have some important defense against Eagle Artillery here. I might just put my uh, Teslas right here, and that way if they go to Queen Lock, all four Teslas will spring up, killing that Queen, that's good. What you do not want to do on the other hand, you don't want to have special Tesla pockets. People who, I've seen people who have a pocket, let me just add builder right now, that have a spots like this. Now, what defenses can you fit in there that are invisible that take up exactly four spaces other than the Tesla? There are none. So, I don't wanna, you don't want to do this because then the person knows there's Teslas there and he can build based on those Teslas there. Well, what else you can do is you could actually have like the same pocket here where it may appear as if there are Tesla pockets. And you may want the opponent to go cream up right there. And they think there'll only be two tests in these two pockets. But actually, all four tests are here. So, a surprise. What you could also do, imagine you have a tunnel. Like, like in tunnel, there's low tunnel halls, but it's tunnel here. People might think that you have good traps here. And so, may only go one giant, one barbarian there at a time. Test, test for tap, check for traps. And they want to use all the barbarians and troops. But I'm gonna have a single trap there. So they end up using so many troops um, without actually. So they end up using so many different troops that actually 
like getting and acting any traps, be a lot more cautious, and that's good for you, because there are no traps there. And you can have other traps in different spots where they're more important. What else do you want to talk about? Um, air sweepers, put them to hit air defenses to make sure it make sure the air is both protected by air sweepers. Um, let me show like put it like this. I'll talk about that also. also here's what. Your warden, if not defense, gives a buff. Poach, you really want to try to put your warden, your king, your queen, maybe your clan castle all together. It's such a point that it's hard to lure them away. Something I've seen, I haven't actually done this myself, but when they have a ton of hot, when they have a clan castle, with healers. If you act those healers, the healers will not follow the troops, they'll heal the queen or the king. The, while the king protects the queen because of the highest health, queen does damage, Grand Warren gives its buff to all three troops, healers heal, it's a really strong defense. Maybe if maybe people with high level troops can kill those healers right away, but low level people, that might cause them to waste so much time for that one wizard seen by a golem to try to kill that queen who is being healed. As well as, as well as with the healers, it might even be able to stop the whole attack. That's good, good idea. Now, lastly, I will actually just show you all my bases, what I built on them, and how they all work. And now, you see my main base right away. There isn't that much pop anything super cool. I do have special layers for my wizard towers, and I'll pocket here. When they do attack, I want lots of their giants or whatever troops to all die those spring traps. Wizard towers will constantly do damage, and I'll be sucked together for those all four wizard towers to do damage. And then I do have just a few bombs here, making it harder to attack. When they do attack with troops like Hogwarts, they'll go from the air defense to the Inferno Tower if both of these are gone. So that's why I have my giant bombs there. Um, I have my seeking air mines to try to stop queen blocks. Really, that's kind of it. Next, I mean, this is just something I'm making. Decoration, really nothing super cool. Just my YouTube. I mean, when I become a million, when I become... When I have a million subscribers, I do need a base like that, you know. Every single popular YouTuber has that. It's just a base I organize just to see what walls I have. Now, my next three are my war. Are actually, what I use for war. This one is my war base. Now, what I do have is I have a few time fill elements, like these huts right here. I have simple bait. Uh, but then also, I have really weak defenses in the center, like bomb towers, other than like artillery. I have this one little layer, which is hard for the queen off the pass because of the seeking air mines, and you can't easily ask them with a balloon, because that Tesla, those wizards, those archer tower will quickly kill them, and because of high damage, that's good. And just go for that little artillery, try to clear out the whole base. Also, the option going from the archer tower side, that's not good, there aren't that many things. And I do have some Teslas here, making it harder to clear away and funnel out with these buildings. As a space. Now, this little pocket, this, this little hallway is what every troop will follow. Especially just like Pekka's, like boulders, and those traps will incinerate them. Also, I'm gonna cast close to this side, meaning I'll take, meaning they can easily activate from this side, but if you don't think about it, when they put the artillery, it'll take a while for them to activate. Next, I have uh, my this base. This is actually not the best base, but the idea of this base is if they do use troops like miners, then I do have some defense now buildings on the outsides, but the main part is this entrance right here. And I think it's the easiest for everyone to enter from this side. Now, I just hope that all my buildings are stacked so, so close together that just that it ends up that they all just take heavy damage from any from any side. As well as I do have my glide artillery and my inferno towers protected well. I do have my glide artillery on the bottom just to add a, a bit more B element for some attack, attack from the bottom. And here I just have a few walls. I'm pretty sure I'll be just switch these two. Let me just do that right now. Just kind of for decoration, kind of really harder for a siege machine to pass. And my third base, this is actually a two star base, where I have my twin hall up here, which is far away. It's in an own pocket, an own layer. But the majority of my buildings are just on the outsides, but I have my good build defenses in here. And they all protect the eagle artillery. Uh, or just these other defenses. And I'm hoping that it takes another a while to break everything because it's so airy. 
or you still don't get the town hall, say go for the artillery side. That's it. Now, that's all my bases I have. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for